Who's that on the on on the Golf Digest, sir, Ricky? I don't know. Hang on. That's Tim Mahoney. Hey, I know Tim Mahoney. He's at uh, Talking Stick Golf Club, and this is an issue from February of 2001. I was still in high school. That's fun. Check that out. He's got a true golf shirt on. That's fun. So, I am I am excited about today's guest because one, I until just recently haven't been very familiar with the products that they have, and I'm a huge fan of fashion. And we recently introduced Sligo Wear as the official apparel sponsor of the Google Plus Golf community, and just looking through the website of the company that we're featuring today, their stuff is awesome. So I am just pumped to learn more about about them and all of the things that they have going on. Um, and they're a newer company, too. They started just last year, late last year, like really late last year, but we'll get to that. But we've got um, Les Bailey with us from Pro Golf Now. Say hi, Les. Hi, Les. I'm so glad you said that because I was hoping that you would. <laughs> <laughs> and we have Jason Boslow from Shop Junior Golf. Say hi, Jason. Hello. See, you did. I'm not going to give you the satisfaction. Oh, you would have. <laughs> and our guest of honor, we have Robert Brunner from DeVro. And I'm not even going to pretend to explain what DeVro is or who you are. So take a couple of minutes to introduce yourself to the community and tell us who you are and what you do and what DeVro is. Wonderful. Yeah, my name is Robert Brunner. I'm the creative director and designer at DeVro. It's a men's, a new men's golf line, uh, touching on modern styling. Uh, just just designing for the, the modern gentleman and creating a new product that is fun, that can be transcendable on course and off course. So that's who okay. we are. Very cool. Well, like I said, you guys started in December of 2013, so you're brand new. Did you have a chance to go to the 2014 PJ Merchandise Show, which is in January? So, I mean, if you did, that's just right out of the gate. You hit the ground running. Oh, yeah, we definitely did. That was, uh, that was a big moment for us. Did you have a booth? We did. We had a booth. We had a big setup. You know, we wanted to make a big splash and kind of get the attention of buyers and the public eye on us. And Orlando is a great place to showcase your product. Yeah, it absolutely is. I, I was actually not there this year. I had been six years in a row and didn't get the chance to go this year. So hopefully next year I'll be I'll be back down there. And it's a good place to play some golf too. There's a lot of really good golf courses not too far. And if you need to, you can go over to Walt Disney World, which I may or may not have done in the last few years I've been there. So, um, And Jason, I, I, I cannot believe this. You're not only wearing a hat from the good old boys, you've got your back nine hat on. No, your shirt from the good old boys. The, the hat is from the back nine. Yeah, hey, I wish I, I wish I had a uh, good old boys shirt. I haven't. Yeah, me too, good old boys. I've seen my address. Well, hey, you, know, unless you live like 10 minutes from those guys, so you have no excuse. Yeah, you should just go pick it up. They're but busy. This, this episode of the Friday Foursome, as always, is sponsored by the Back Nine Network. And Jason, I don't think that that shirt is is necessarily stylish, but I do like it. I like it. It fits well. Yeah. It's definitely got the golf motif to it, and it matched my logo on the Back Nine. It hat. does match it. My my logo is black, and I'm wearing black pants. That kind of fits right, and pink shoes. Yeah. So. Anyway. So 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 back to our guest. I gotta ask. So first of all, I saw pictures of their uh, trade show booth, and they definitely went in with a splash. That booth was. Huge, and it looked really nice. I saw pictures of it from the show. So you guys definitely weren't messing around when you set that booth up. It looked really nice. Um, but I got to ask, so where did you come up with your company name, and, and does it mean something, and what does it mean? It means something. It comes from my grandmother, who is – she just turned 90 this year. She's a fashionista. She's – you know, she wears high heels still to this day. She's kind of been an inspiration to my brother and I who started the company and, you know, just the whole family and everyone around her. So, you know, we kind of pay tribute to her by naming the company after such a wonderful person. That is now awesome. that's cool. Now, someone else turned nine this week, and he went skydiving. Did your, did your grandma ever go skydiving? <laughs> uh, she, she did not go skydiving. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Now, Les, you're almost 90. I'm sorry, that was me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm getting close. You're, you're not, well, the most fashionable person, so I, I'm curious <laughs> to see what kind of questions you can come up with today. <laughs> <laughs> I am fashionable. What are you well, talking about? I don't call camo hats fashionable. <laughs> I've, got, I've got a Back Nine Network hat on. If oh, I had okay. a uh, good old boy shirt, I'd be wearing that, but I don't. So, uh, <laughs> Welcome to the Friday Foursome, Robert. Uh, <laughs> it's like this the entire time. Les and I just give each other a hard time. I... Uh, Based on your accent, uh, I mean, it's a little surprising. I when I seen seen the name of your company and, and the style, uh, Roger Federer come to mind and France came to mind. So I thought maybe you were based in Europe, but where are you based? 
I'm based in Los Angeles, but I'm a Texas boy born and raised from West Coast. <laughs> All right. Fact. Oh, boy, here we go. <laughs> Can you see my little banner there in the background? Yeah, I was going to My call. Texas roots. <laughs> I drove through Texas. There you right? go. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, maybe from yeah. Texas, but not a Cowboys fan. He probably right. got really, he probably got run out of Texas. <laughs> it was about a seven day drive to get from point one to point B. So. <laughs> it's a big state. Yeah, no kidding. So, um, you've got a lot of big names kind of already connected to you, like Greg Norman and Johnny Miller. Like, where did those relationships start? Did you have those prior to starting the company? And maybe talk about your relationship with those individual uh, big brands on the PGA Tour. Oh, well, I just, you know, I use those names. that Those people were just inspiration for me when creating this brand. You know, in order to create what I wanted, I, I looked back to the past and, you know, took the vintage aspect of how those guys dressed, what it was that they were wearing, and, you know, decided to do a modern twist to their style and, you know, how they were perceived on the course and kind of create a, the cool element of what they had to make it relevant today. And, you know, using those guys' names is just, I grew up watching them. Uh, I was young, of course, but still, I mean, they, they were the guys to watch back in the day. So, and I wanted to kind of keep that live, <clears throat> keep that style going through, uh, throughout all the golf and then just kind of add different things to it. So have you have they had the chance to see the clothing then since they have been an inspiration? Have you sent them shirts or had any no, connections? I have to them? not. I have not. Uh, that's you know, it's another beast getting in touch with those kind of guys, but uh, everyone's on the radar. It's just a matter of time. Yeah. <laughs> well I saw it I saw it looked like Damon Hack from the Golf Channel wears your stuff. You you guys feature him quite a bit on your Facebook page, so I was curious how that happened. And um, you know, how did you guys get your brand introduced to him and get it on the golf channel? Yeah, that went through our, you know, the wonderful PR lady, Mary Beth. She's, I guess, has connections with him, and he liked the product and asked if we wouldn't mind sponsoring him on the show. And, you know, it's a great opportunity to people view our product on TV. So, you know, that was a no-brainer for us. Yeah, I'm sure. Your sweaters look great. Like I said, I've seen the sweaters that he wears and, and the pictures of them, and I think they look really comfortable, they look really durable, and, and, and good-looking on top of all that. Thanks. Les, I bet it's cold enough where you are to wear a sweater. Uh, actually, it was cool this morning. It is cool See? outside today. You oh, need yeah. a sweater. <laughs> uh, how soon is it going to be, John, before, or Robert, before the uh, uh, golf courses allowed non-collared shirts on the golf courses? No, no good question. As, I wear, as I'm wearing one. That is, that is a good question. Yeah, but you're not playing golf today. <laughs> no. No, I, I hope they don't allow that. You know, I, I'm a, man, I, I like style. I like dressing up. So keep the collar on the course. Well, that, I noticed, I noticed, uh, you, you know, your line does include shirts without collars, and that's one of the reason I asked. Oh no, no, we have our all our polos are collared, and I mean, the only thing without a collar is the sweater. Oh, okay. Yeah, so the, the so the collar sticks up under the under the sweater, and you're in your. That's your right. Eight. So then you're legal, right? <laughs> so, so this is a two-part question. The first part, in relation to the golf shirts, do you button all the way to the top since you seem to be about fashion? Oh, good question. You know what? I'm right now. I'm wearing one, and it's buttoned all the way to the top. Uh, I do. It's 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 I something like it. More hipster, you know, whatever it is. But you know, it's a style thing. I'm I'm into it. But the way I, the way I see it is they wouldn't have put in a button there if they didn't want me to button it. So <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and just go button up all the way to the top. I like it. Now the next question is related to Mary Beth. Tell me more about your relationship with her and how I mean she's just fantastic and she's done so much work with with PR and in the golf space specifically. Um, tell me about your relationship with them. You know we are lucky to get in touch with her. She's just been a blessing to the brand and getting her name out there. Um, you know she's wonderful. She does tremendous work and she has great connections. Um, just meeting her a year ago and from where our brand was to where it is now, I mean, I give her all the respect in the world to that. That's awesome. Well, she, she was the one that helped coordinate this kind of on last minute notice and uh, I'm glad she did because it's just been fun learning about learning about uh, about you. So Jason, um, even though you're not buttoned all the way to the top, um, I guess I'll let you ask another question. Yeah, so, so this one's kind of in, in my space. Do you guys plan on offering or, or do you think um, there's a market for kids' clothes? I'm in the, you know, Shop Junior Golf is kids-oriented and, you know, teen to even the little guys down to six years old. Curious if you guys ever plan on launching a line or 
um, too too niche of a market for you guys that that uh, cater to kids. Yeah, and I've thought about that. Kids, kids is kind of difficult. It's a you know difficult design process. Um, nothing that is in our near future that we're looking at, but you know, hopefully down the road that we have the option to do that. You know, that would that would be great. Good deal. So we talked about the Mac Nine, and Les's next question is related to the Mac Nine network. Yes, it is. Uh, based on the fact that we are related to the Mac Nine network. <laughs> how did how did the uh, video with the Back Nine Network affect your sales? I think we got we got a few sales from that video. That video was great. It was pretty cool. It was a it was a different way to talk about the brand and do a product review. So I thoroughly enjoyed it, and you know it got some exposure and created a couple sales opportunities. So it was wonderful. Who did right. you uh, work with over there? Just out of curiosity, I know all the guys over there, so. Oh, I'm not sure. That all went through Mary Beth, so, okay. yeah. She's that good. She is. She is and what, what, about, what about PGA guys? Do you guys have anybody on tour that, that, wears, your, that wears your apparel? We, we have two players we're sponsoring, not on the PGA tour, but Brian Cooper, who was a big break uh, player, and then Zach Sucher, who's on the web.com right now. So we're sponsoring those guys. But we're also looking for, you know, talent on the PGA Tour. Um, you know, it's kind of hectic right now since they're in the middle of the season, middle of the U.S. Open, to get someone. But we've been sending product and, you know, had some doors open, but ready to kind of get a PGA person and let us go to the next level. That's How awesome. How many total to items do you have in your, I mean, in your portfolio? Uh, items will right now just the spring of first collection was just offering polo shirts, um, two different fabrics and polo shirts. We have uh, sweaters and hats, just on the spring collection. For fall, we're introducing pants, you know, sweaters, cardigans, hats, and the polo shirts as well. And then every season beyond that, we're going to continue to add uh, two pieces or a piece, just kind of elevate the lifestyle aspect of the brand. Sure. Now, they're unbelievably popular right now, and I feel like everybody's offering them or starting their own companies with them. Belts. What about belts? I mean, obviously a white belt would make the most sense to where you would start, but are you going to get into belts at all? I want to get into belts, but unfortunately, right now, leather is not my expertise. I know very little about leather and accessories, but we've had some connections with a few guys that do belts that we want to work on a collaboration with someone that you know is an expert in that field, and hopefully... You know, by spring 15, we'll offer belts. Well, that's cool. There's a, there's probably seven or eight different belt manufacturers and companies in the Google Plus Golf community. I mean, 59 belts and Next Belt. I mean, there's tons of options out there. So if you ever need anybody, to, I mean, sure, Mary Beth's got a laundry list of people that she can introduce you to, <laughs> yeah. too. But uh, if you ever need me to introduce you to anybody, I'd be more than happy to. I appreciate that. So um, I'm talking about guys on tour, not wearing your clothes, but who, in your opinion, is the best dressed and the worst dressed? Tour player right now. Oh, that's a really good question. <laughs> Let's start with best. My my best dress, my favorite dress would be Yoshikawa, okay. uh, for me personally. But I also like I was watching uh, the Open a day and Graham McDowell always looks you know dressed to a T. The fit of his clothes, the way he wears his clothes, there's something about you know it's kind of nostalgic uh, the way he dresses. So I, I thoroughly enjoy his style. Okay. Um, what did you Ricky think, Kamar? What did hang you think on, of Mark Selassie? Hang on, I want to hear his. No, hang on, I, 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 I want to ask the question. What, what, what did you think of Marcel Seam today? I didn't see. <laughs> I, didn't I was looking back at the World Cup in in the Open, so <laughs> he's uh, he, he's neon today. Oh no! Oh, that'll lead me to my next question. As soon as I hear your your least favorite dressed PGA Tour player. My least favorite it has to be. It, it's unpopular choice for me to say this, but. Bubba, I can't, I can't stand to see some of the stuff he wears. I don't know, I, it just doesn't flow well with me. So Bubba is my favorite dress on. But he does button his shirts all the way to the top, so I'll give him that. <laughs> Saves him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, okay, so in, I, and when you said unpopular, I thought you were gonna say who I was gonna ask my next question about. Ricky Fowler, what are your thoughts on the way he dresses, and to that point, how he dressed yesterday? I love the fact that he paid homage with the knickers, but doing the whole flat bill cap like. I mean, maybe you should have done it, gone bigger, gone home. Right. I mean, he could have traded the cap out, but that that's just who he is. You know, that's that's the branding of Ricky Fowler. And, uh, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give you that. That's fair. Flat, you know, 
So yeah, I can't I've never seen him in anything flat. other than a flat brim. Yeah. I'm, you know, and at my age, I'm a I'm a flat brim player too. I get out there in it, so it's, it it causes a lot of flag. Not a lot of people will like it, but <laughs> are they? Especially as old guys don't like it, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just glad you put a hat on last because before you put your hat on, I wasn't oh, yeah. very keen on standing there in a bald, bald head. Um, hey, so Jay, hey. No, I'm sorry. I already called you old. I, I apologize. I know. And we had last week where I called you old about 64 times. Jason, let's kick it up 65. with some re- retail store location conversation. Yeah, I was curious. Like, I couldn't tell. If it wasn't really clear. Do you guys have a retail store or? No, we don't. Not at the moment. Uh, you know, just starting out as a first year brand, you know, we, there's so many moving pieces just to get uh, sure. exposure and get noticed and, you know, paying start fees for this and that and whatever not. So retail is not right now no brick and mortar. But, you know, as you, once our line starts catching on, if it does, and, you know, more elements that you add, more SKUs, more, you know, pieces of clothing, then then you have the option to look into retail to move move inventory and products. So that's... That's another thing that's down the road that hopefully you can get to the point where we can have retail. I mean, that'd be fantastic. So so on that same kind of question line, do you guys have any distributors that you work through where you guys are getting your products out to either boutiques or some big box retailers? Yeah, so I mean, we have a whole Salesforce uh, sales team put in place. We have a director of sales that's located out in uh, Scottsdale named Brian Lohman. And beneath him, he has you know, a lot of sales reps nationwide that are repping the product and getting it out. And, you know, that's that's the avenue that we go, targeting green grass and resorts right now. It's, you know, it's best for the brand. It's what we're marketing to. It's, so it's, it's been wonderful in that regard. Where, where is he in Scottsdale? That's where I am. He lives, I cannot tell you where in Scottsdale. I was just there about a month and a half ago. I think it's a little bit outside of Scottsdale. Okay. Well, next time you're here, let me know. We'll tee it up and... Uh, yeah, most definitely. Play golf. So, I, I mean, I guess that would be my next question. Do you play golf? I mean, you're making golf clothing. Do you play golf? I do. I do. Uh, I'm not going to say I play well, but I get out there. <laughs> but you play, and I'm going to keep going back to it. You button your shirt all the way to the top. <laughs> well, I do, but it depends is my thing. What kind it of shirt? It depends. Yeah, for me. With golf shirts. So if it was a golf shirt, I mean, would there ever be an instance where you wouldn't button your golf shirt all the way to the top? Yeah. In my collection, I have shirts with contrasting uh, collars that you just don't want to button all the way up to the top. So if it's a solid garment, it's going to be buttoned up to the top. Jason, do you remember when Tony posted, Tony Core Logos posted something about uh, Ben Hogan's shirt and the Ben Hogan logo was on the collar? And I was like, I don't want to see that button to the top. We had like a battle about it, and I get it, but... I still want to butt all the way to the top. Bubba would like, not agree I, with you. <laughs> I think the next time I wear like uh, a polo shirt, I'm actually going to button it to the top just so I can see how it feels. And it's like I just man, I can't get my hands around it right now. Because if I oh. wouldn't have the top one buttoned, I would feel I shouldn't even have a shirt on. It would feel <sighs> oh no, it has to. Be I'll buttoned. try and just give you the benefit of the doubt, but I'm yes. not making any promises. Next here. next week on next next week's Friday foursome, I expect you and Les to have a buttoned all the way to the top collared shirt. On. <laughs> Les, can you do that for me? I, I, I wouldn't hold my breath. <laughs> so, so here we go. You play golf. Now, I, I have a question for you. So long putter or short putter? Oh, why do you always bring this up? You started it with the whole button-down shirt thing. So. 33 putter is what I'm using. So I use short putter for me. I, yeah. I, I, like like this guy. I like this guy more and more every time he answers a question. I, have yeah, a I can't wait till you get to one of your other questions. We'll see how he answers it. <laughs> My putter is a Wilson 8802, so I'm, I'm still going old school on that. All right, yeah, so all what's right. the, what's, I mean, I don't want to call it an obsession, but it might be for you, the, the fascination with the old school vintage style. I mean, you've got an old school putter with old school technology, and I mean, it doesn't necessarily old school technology, but like it just seems like you've got a very vintage feel to everything about you and the brand. So is there a reason for that, or is that just kind of how it worked? Yeah, I would say just kind of my upbringing, the way I was raised. I was raised, you know, back in Texas and everything is more uh, family, kind of conservative. Family conservative, oriented. yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> and it, so, you know, I, that's kind of my roots. That's always what I go back to when I'm trying to create or develop something new. It's, that's always what I go back to. Uh, you know, and also my dad, when I grew up, Thank you, darling. he showed me, I watched golf with him and it was the old players and, you know, his love for the game and talking about them and, you know, the first set of clubs he bought me were Wilson Staff Blades. So everything was... Or they. 
that if you can hit these, you can hit anything. So, <laughs> so, so, so that begs the question. Uh, you know, graduating from TCU, uh, have you ever played Colonial? I was just there last weekend and played it. All right. Uh, I've played Colonial a couple of times myself. It's, it's a great golf course. Where can I order a shirt? Let's say that I'm sitting here and I want a shirt. And I do want a shirt. So where do I go to order uh, order a shirt? And what's the what's that process like for? I mean, is it perfected this early on into the company? Did you do those things and, and work out those kinks before you started, or are you learning those as as you get started? Yeah, we have a whole e-commerce front a website. Um, you know, right now we're doing a Father's Day special, so free shipping on any shirt. Um, but there you is, go, Ricky. Give me a shirt, huh? For Father's Day. <laughs> <laughs> the website is DV rxgolf.com devro.com yeah. was taken so oh it was what it, what is i was going to ask what it, is that url then cuz it's it's some guy that posts pictures of old cars and family reunion i don't know he won't sell <laughs> he won't sell we tried <laughs> so then did you match all of your social networking sites to the url or how did that work yeah everything's matched that we we use a third party company to do you know build our website uh, our social media fronts so you know they've been wonderful in that regard because I know nothing about um, website development or anything that just that just blows my mind so you um, just know how to design clothes so then that's I'm sorry I'm gonna interrupt last do you design all of the clothes is that you behind that the was my doing? question there oh uh, then never mind yeah. last go ahead and ask your question <laughs> what kind of an education do you need to uh, in background to actually design that clothes wasn't and my logos question like <laughs> got my hand, didn't I Tell you the education you don't need, and which I have, is a geology degree. <laughs> <laughs> but I did it. I did it. Yeah, two crossover. <laughs> attention to detail is what I tell people. There you so, go. But I did. I did went to a fashion school in Los Angeles and studied out there for a year. Um, product development, which is creating product, cutting and sewing. So you know, I, I learned how garments are constructed, and that's that's the education in which I use for my designing. Very cool. Right. So where do you find inspiration for right, Ricky, you can go ahead now. a new shirt design? I mean, are you looking for it? Does it come to you or kind of I'm always fascinated by like where where designs that I like come from. It's every day for me. Uh, it's the most frustrating thing in the world is trying to find inspiration. You know, it, it's I, I take to the golf course and look around. Like I always say, I look back at in time and see what they're doing, but you know, what is relevant, what is current and you know, I look a lot to fashion and focus on fashion because it's the mainstay in what we're doing. So, um, you know, there's trend websites. There's, you know, going to New York and visiting these seminars and whatnot that kind of, they, they give you a groundwork to what you want to uh, base your inspirations off of um, based on color plays and uh, design detail. And that, you know, that's where it all comes from. Then outside of that, you have to find your creative niche and what, you know, what place you're into, what kind of food, you know, whatever it is that inspires you is is something that you put down on a board and, you know, create from there. Very cool. Good answer. Yeah, that is. Les, yeah. what's next, buddy? What's next for me? I'm done. <laughs> yeah, you were I done like four question. questions ago. Yeah. You... <laughs> well, we're getting close to my favorite part, but I'm going to let Jason ask one more question. Yeah, Jason. I've got one one more. So, small business entrepreneur myself, and and I got to ask, you know, from a startup point of view, what's your biggest business challenge right now, and and what are some of the hurdles that you guys are trying to 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 cover um, to grow your business? You know, biggest challenge that I find is creating the awareness around the brand, um, making it for the public eye to see. Just getting out there is is quite difficult. I, I started out and it was hard for me because I didn't know many people in the golf community. Uh, meeting people like Mary Beth and some other people I met along the way have helped me out tremendously. But it's creating the awareness and having people, um, you know, believe in your product even though you're a year a year old into the game. That that's the hardest thing is to to make them believe that you know you are someone here to stay. You are someone that's making a decent product. You know. How do you create that belief? How, how do you get that awareness and the attention onto your brand where people want to come in and buy it and then, you know, repeat buys? And that's, that's been the hardest. That's been the biggest challenge is, is creating that awareness. Interesting. Cool. 
Well, I can't thank you enough for doing this. This is it's it's a different side, I guess. Kind of, a, I mean, like the good old boys. Like it's not the same conversation. I mean, it's a different style of clothing. It's a different style of fashion. Even though Jason, I love that shirt, and I hope there's one in the mail for me. Wink, wink to the good old boys that are watching. But it's it's cool because it's it's almost. I mean, would you consider your style a high fashion? I mean, would that be the best way to put it? I mean, I in golf, I would say a high fashion. Most okay. definitely, it's something unique. It's not nothing that uh, you really see out there. It's a different. It's a different take on what the polo is. Um, yeah. You know, it's it's very clean and sophisticated. So it's it's very easy to wear, whether you're golfing, whether you're going out. Um, you know, and that's the whole inspiration behind it is to create that product for someone. And, right. and I got. I, I like how that crossover works with your products. You know, viewing your products on the site and things. It seems that it's very golf friendly and very just. Everyday, you know, casual business, whatever it is, friendly as well. So it's a nice little crossover. You know, normally when people are wearing a golf shirt, you know it's a golf shirt. Uh, right. You know, whether it's on the golf. Yeah. So, I, like I said, that's what interested me about your product was that it was a really good crossover product, if you will, to be able to wear on the course or off the course. Well, that's why I went with the uh, original assumption there that it, that it was uh, French and it was uh, Roger Federer, you know, because it kind of flowed like, you know, his stuff does. <laughs> That's why. I That's not that. a bad thing, though. I don't think to no, have a French no, connection. No. I mean, I got a lot of inspiration from European style. That's you know, it's what I wear. So it's what inspires me a lot uh, in the fit of clothes and the tailoring aspects. Right. So that's a big thing for me. Very cool. I again, I can't thank you enough. Thank you, Les, for um, showing up and not buttoning your shirt all the way to the top. Thank you, Jason, for. I don't have any buttons on my shirt. Nine. I know you don't. Thank you, Jason, for actually wearing your back nine hat, which I haven't worn mine in a while, but I should. I have it with me. That counts, right? And I, and I hope the guys at the back nine are watching because of all the crossover connections here. I mean, you've worked with them, but Jason, this is this is this your favorite part, or is it? I mean, I'm ready, man. Have at it. So I don't know. I don't know if Robert knows what's coming. So we do this thing called the back nine. It's nine rapid fire questions that you have. Well, you haven't known what any of the questions are going to be, but they're a little more fun. But I want answers as fast as I ask them. Are you ready for the back nine? Should I be nervous? I mean, yeah. maybe. A couple of these questions <laughs> are going to depend on if we talk after this this conversation. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Who will win the U.S. Open this week? Oh. God, what is his? I just blanked on his name. The German guy. He's got like a forty-seven Timer. shot lead. Timer. Timer. There we go. Now, favorite. What is your favorite golf course? I guess I would have to say Colonial right now since I just played it. What are you wearing when you're not wearing your own products? Nothing. Coffee or tea? <laughs> coffee, most definitely. Black. That's a that's a part side question because I drink coffee too. No, I I cream man. <laughs> Be very careful how you answer this question. Will Tiger break Jack's record? No way. Okay, this ah, interview's over. That's all right. <laughs> Stop it. Um, what is your favorite PGA Tour major? The Masters. Have you ever had a hole in one? Never. Not even close. Not even close. What is the most expensive item you sell, and how much is it? It is our sweater, and it uh, retails at one forty-five. Okay. US. And what is next for Robert Brunner? Man, hopefully the world. I don't know. That's that's <laughs> we don't know. That's that's a good question. Well, it's gonna be fun to watch. That's for sure. I can't wait. I, I just it's so cool to see a company that's just getting started to have had such the splash that you've had right out of the gate being at the PGA show and 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 producing a high quality product that that fast. So before we say goodbye, Les, why why don't you have your banjo? Uh, <clears throat> Didn't we decide this is how we were going to end the Friday foursome I, moving I, forward? I think I think with 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 uh, Robert being from Texas, uh, the, the the other rapid fire question should be heat or spurs. Oh, good one, spurs, baby! All right, <laughs> this is what we are doing. I don't, <laughs> yeah. know, I don't know what that means. All right, <laughs> it must be hashtag sports. I don't know. <laughs> hashtag <long>. sports. <laughs> Les, Les, play us a song to say goodbye. Goodbye, lady. Oh, you're, <laughs> sing us a song. Play us a song. Uh, it it it's all put away. I I haven't. I don't have it out since I left yeah, well, we're I gonna, we're, Carolina this week. We're going to discuss that before next week because you are now the <laughs> fundamental ending of the Friday Foursome is a goodbye song. With I, can, I can't be doing that. I can't be doing that. Well, then <laughs> I will end this as Jesus Martinez stole from Tin Cup. Make more birdies. <laughs>